Hey guys, Lux99 here coming at you with another review tonight. I am bringing you WWE Raw for August 25th, 2014. Um, commentators were, as usual, Jerry, Jerry the King Lawler, JBL, and Michael Cole. And the city was in Anaheim, California, which the crowd actually kind of disappointed me. They were kind of quiet for a bunch of stuff, but like near near the middle or, or end of the match they would pick it up a bit. So we kick off with the Lesnar and Cena um like N Night of Champions hype which was actually pretty cool. It was like the Hall of Hall of Fame form or whatever. It was it was an interesting way to hype up the match for um for the pay per view and Cena just uh he, he cut a pretty good promo afterwards so that wasn't uh too bad. And like I said, it was an it was an interesting way to build up the the championship match, and you know that there really wasn't much else to it. Um, so our first match tonight is uh, Rusev versus Swagger. I I thought it was a little bit too early to have this match again. Rusev just won the flag match to kind of end the feud, so it kind of makes that seem like a worthless win. Um, you know, I think they just should have uh, waited longer. Um, you know, you had the back and forth action, which was pretty good. Jackets in the Patriot Lock pretty early. Um, and then Rusev is still selling that ankle injury from Swagger, so that was pretty cool. Swagger dominates for a bit. Rusev hits a big avalanche as we go into a commercial break. And I just noticed uh, d during the middle of the match that the Germans aren't, uh, you know, the, the German announce team is not ringside anymore, which is kind of disappointing because I thought those, uh, a cool addition to the raw set, so I hope that isn't a permanent thing to not have them at ringside. Um, so, a as we come back from break, Rusev hits a pretty impressive, uh, spinning heel kick. Swagger hits a belly to belly, uh, suplex, clothesline, big boot combo. Swagger eventually goes for the Swagger Bomb. Rusev lifts up his feet. Swagger counters it into the Patriot Lock. Rusev finally gets to the bottom rope. Swagger counters the Accolade into the Patriot Lock into a roll up for two. Rusev dominates with the ribs, and eventually the ref has to end the match because Swagger can't continue with the injured ribs. Um, it was a good match, but the ending was kind of anti um, climatic, so, you know. It made sense, though, but I just wish they kind of waited longer to have this match again. It was a solid match, uh, however, though. And, you know, the the flag match at SummerSlam was the rubber match, so they just should have waited a little bit longer, in my personal opinion. It was a, it was a good match, though, and it kind of r reminded me of how much I liked their feud so much. So then Swagger and Bo are in the back. I like of how these two are going to have their feud. Um, out next we had Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam in a number one contenders match. And the winner will face Sheamus for the U.S. title at, at Night of Champions, I'm assuming. Sheamus is on commentary, which he actually wasn't too bad at it. Uh, Rob Van Dam hits a super kick and a rolling under for two right at the start. Um, he then, Cesaro eventually hits the double foot stomp on, on the apron, which was a pretty cool spot. Uh, RVD eventually comes back, hits a split leg moonsault kick, uh, rest kick, Cesaro eventually hits a hot shot on the top rope and a neutralizer for the win. Definitely not their best match, um, I don't know, it just seemed like it was missing something that was kind of short for, uh, for a number one contenders match, but I'm still stoked for Sheamus and, and, uh, Cesaro to start back up because they had a solid feud earlier on in the year, and, uh, you know, Cesaro just throwing the title right in Jameis' face, which is classic, and I can't wait for this feud. So, up um, next, we had Paige versus Natalia. Uh, you know, it was a good match for what it was. It was technical, back and forth, tons of cool uh, counters. Um, Paige kind of looked dominant, and I'm glad that, that they didn't do the same finish again with the, you know, of how AJ comes down and kind of distracts Paige and stuff like that. But, uh, Paige and... I think, I think the Paige and, and AJ feud isn't, oh no, it's kind of turning weird. I mean, I still like it, and I still think it's a solid feud, but I don't know if I'm liking the direction it's kind of taking. But, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep enjoying it, and, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it some more time. So, next we had the Ambrose, uh, Eology. 
And so out comes Kane. He introduces Seth Rollins. Rollins cuts a pretty good promo. Um, and then eventually Reigns interrupts. I like of how these two are going to have their feud as well. Rollins needs um, Ambers to come back. And Reigns is going to go through all of the members of the authority on his road to Triple H anyways. So why not face Rollins now? It's a perfect opportunity. And if you add the fact that Reigns is still ticked about the Shields breakup. It just makes for an awesome feud. So I'm really excited for this one. Uh, so up next we had the Usos versus Goldust and Stardust in a tag team title match. Uh, you know the crowd was kind of dead for this one, which is sad because you have two great teams and it was a decent match as well. So both teams kind of worked on the arms at the, at the beginning. Uh, Goldust and Stardust eventually hit this awesome uh, double team maneuver where Goldust hits this awesome like running sent on off the apron and um, Stardust hits like a high cross body off the top. Uh, to the outside. Stardust eventually hits a clothesline for two. Um, Goldust and uh, I believe it was Jimmy Uso hit a double cross body. They both made the tag. Jay comes in a house on fire. It's the bump bump on Goldust. Simone drop to Gold. I mean, bump bump to Stardust. Simone drop to Goldust. Eventually hits the flying Uso on Stardust, but he hurts his knee on the fall down. Stardust gets back in the ring at 9, and they win via count out. And then Goldust and Stardust are very mad about the result of the match, and they kind of turn heel and attack the Usos, which I think it was awesome. Because uh, I think it was very like unexpected to see them turn heel. You know, we've barely even seen them as faces, I guess. Um... It adds really a incentive to the tag team match, and you know I was wondering of what they were going to do for the tag team titles at, at the next pay per view. But I think this is a solid way to go because um, you know that these two have have chemistry, and it's going to be awesome at night, champions, and it makes for a good story as well for them to turn heel. But you know tonight it was a good match for what it was. Kane and Rollins talk about their handicap match a little bit later on tonight. Brock and Cena package is shown, and it's just an awesome video package, spot on, as always. Uh, so then we had Dolph Ziggler versus Sandow. Miz cuts a promo. This was kind of a, it was a unique way to get Sandow on the show and to continue the feud without having another match between Dolph and Miz. Um, Dolph hits a drop kick for two right at the start. Sandow very aggressive, uh, and he kind of used the Miz's uh, moveset, so that was kind of a neat little uh, detail from Sandow. Sandow eventually hits a nice back elbow, drop kick to knee, locks in the figure four leg lock. Dolph counters it. Um, Sandow eventually gets to the ropes. Dolph hits a zigzag out of nowhere for the win. So far, I'm really enjoying Miz versus Dolph Ziggler been an awesome feud so far and it was a decent match for what it was. These two are making the IC title relevant yet um, once again. So then we had the Nikki and Brie segment and you know the acting and mic work just wasn't the best in this segment and it probably won't be for the for the whole feud but at the brawl afterwards and the storyline showed me that I still and you know I, I may be the only one but I still have high hopes for this feud. And I'm actually really looking forward to it. I don't know why, and yes, I know I'm the only one, but I'm actually looking forward to this feud. Um, so up next, we have the handicap match between Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins and Kane. So Reigns dominates eventually. It's a spear to Kane. Rollins gets secured with by using the briefcase multiple times. Really nothing special to the match. Um, and I guess my question was, is Reigns feuding with Orton because of what we saw in SmackDown? Or is it Rollins and Kane's? You know, I'm fine with either or, but I don't know. I guess we'll just see. Um, but the post-match uh, beatdown was actually kind of cool with the, with the cinder block yet again. I just thought that was a cool little detail. So up next, we had Slater Gator versus Lost Matadors yet again for the third time. Uh, you know, we saw it on main event, we saw it on Superstars, and now we're seeing it on Raw. And, you know, I love Slater Gator. I just want... I didn't want to see this match yet again. Um, but the Lost Man Doors pick up a victory. Actually, it wasn't as bad as I expected it to be, and Slater Gator was pretty solid. Uh, Bo Dallas versus Kofi is some nice back-and-forth action. Kofi solid, as always. Uh, Bo eventually picked, picked up the victory via the Bo Dog. Um, Bo's just still such an awesome character, and, you know, he's probably one of my favorites, uh, in the mid-card. Excuse me. 
like I said um, before, Bo and Swagger, I think their feud is going to be pretty awesome, and I'm glad that these two are feuding. So up next we have the main event, Cena versus Bray. Cena very aggressive, hits clotheslines, uh, basically uses Brock Lesnar's moveset after that, just dominates Wyatt. Uh, eventually Wyatt starts to come back, but then uh, but then um, Cena like hits a move, and then the other Wyatt family comes in. Out comes uh, Mark Henry and Big Show turns into a six man tag match. Not too bad of a six man tag actually. It was pretty solid. Uh, Cena eventually wins with the STF and then gave attitude adjustments galore. Uh, Cena looked very strong, which is good going into Night of Champions. But the Wyatts kind of looked weak, and they aren't really doing anything right now. So that was kind of disappointing. But you know, I guess I guess they're trying to find something for them. So I don't know. But uh, match of the night, I don't know what I'm gonna give it to. I guess. Um, either Rusev versus Swagger or the main event. Um, yeah, either one of those two. Actually, I'm gonna give it to to Rusev versus Swagger. I I, I enjoyed that match. Um, and you know the overall show. Uh, sort of not the best draw, but definitely not the worst. You know, it had its ups and downs. It was kind of boring as it was progressing. I don't know, I just want exciting stuff to happen on Raw. And I don't know, I think one thing that's kind of taking away from the whole experience is the commentators. You know, the crowd was kind, kind of dead tonight, but, you know, usually they're, you know, the crowds are okay. But really, the commentators is what's killing it for me. I wish they had the NXT commentators or something like that. Um, because I really think it's killing the vibe of the show. But, um, that's going to be all for me. I guess I'll see you guys either Wednesday or Thursday for my Impact review. I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.